Coming up on the Get Loud podcast, we got a special guest, Brentley Weiss. We're going to talk NFL draft. Oh, we're going to talk some Game of Thrones. Oh, you were so excited about that. We're going to talk free agency still and a game at the end of the show. Ick. <laughs> How you doing, guys? It is the Get Loud Podcast presented by SeatGeek, Smoot, Jinx. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Hey, happy Easter weekend. Yes. Most definitely. How's everything going? It, it, this is, we're in what I call the uh, almost the second sports equinox right now. That's right. Where we got all this, the Final Four going on. Mm-hmm. We got the NBA uh, getting to the playoffs. Uh, opening day in Washington. Oh, my God. Right, with the Nats. I'm a Nats fan. You know, I like to go. Listen, can, I, can we agree on this one? Sure. Out of all the sports stadiums in the world, excluding the Olympics, okay, does baseball stadiums have the best food? Because easily, I, easily, right? Easily, it's not close. I've been saying because is it me? Because when I walk in a net stadium, it just it's sensory overload. Yes, like I don't know what I want to eat. I want some of that, mm-hmm. and I want some of that too. And I don't think you get that same feeling in a basketball arena. I eat a football stadium. Oh, because because football. Is there are every play can you know make a huge so you don't really want to thing in basketball yeah, whereas yeah. baseball there are some lulls yeah so in football you just want to like eat your hot dog chug a beer and be let's yeah. hold it bro yeah. let's yeah. hold it yeah. yeah you know <laughs> where in baseball you might have like a ten second lull like they change yeah. pitchers and yeah. like oh I'm gonna enjoy this food for yeah. a while you yeah know? Uh, uh, most definitely but the one thing I can say that baseball got that I hate that they don't show on TV because we all wish we had this walkout music oh. Like, why if don't you they... had a walkout song? Forget it. Hey, all I'm saying is, why won't they show it on TV? Like, you got to be at the game mm-hmm. to see these guys walk out to the and, and then I True. look at them and you can't feel no better than that. Walking out to your <laughs> own song, the whole crowd singing your name. That's, that, that's a different type of intensity. If you had a walkout song, yeah, what would it be? Oh, way to put me on the spot I right know, there. I know, but I had to ask. Oh, man. I would probably take something from like a movie. Okay. Uh, it'll probably be like, you know, the sound of the Eva Empire on uh, what's the name? Doom, 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 doom. Because <laughs> I want the picture to know he's doomed. He's, yeah. I, Fred Vader, the Dark Vader, is here. But I would probably take it. From like a, a movie scene, okay. Because I think the movie uh, scores have more like fans know where they come from. Yeah. All right. So it's it's uh, maybe like a Avengers, what what whatever. What about you, Jinx? Oh my God! See, I'd be the guy playing the music. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, "This is smooth song. We're gonna get out. He wants the Darth Vader. He wants yeah. the uh, Evil Empire. You <laughs> yeah. know, the theme music. Yeah. I'd be the guy up there. I did a story one time back. A long time ago on college baseball players and yeah. their walk-up songs. Yeah. And one dude, it was so funny, his walk-up music was the theme from the People's Court. Yes. So you do. It was why, so funny. That's why I say movie scores are better mm-hmm. than song. Because the song can't play all the way out. But that movie score sets a tone. Yes. A tempo. And it, it gives a feel to it. <sighs> Man, what'd you do this weekend before we get into it? We're going to talk some free agency here on the show. Yeah. We got a special guest coming up. We got a lot to get to. But yeah. before I say that, any of that, yeah. did you do anything fun? I put a pastel color suit on. Oh, for It showed up at church. Oh. To repent my sins of the year. You know I how I bet you I were mean. there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was there, you know, just to see the kids, you know, go hunt eggs and stuff. I remember those days. Yeah. And I, so at the end of the day, it's. And I, I feel like it came a little earlier this year mm-hmm. because I'm an April guy. Sometimes it's in April, sometimes it's not. Yeah. You know, so most definitely I enjoyed it. What about you? I went out with the girl, just went to dinner one night, had drinks both nights. But what was so funny is on a Friday night, we were at this small Italian restaurant. Yeah. And there was definitely, it was kind of tight spacing. Yeah. And there was definitely a couple having a first date next to us. Yeah. And... You could always tell a first date. You can tell. And this cat was saying crazy things like, because Catherine was looking at me like, and I was like, what? And I started listening. And this guy, definitely first day, and he says something to the effect of, you can pretty much Google me online and figure out my net worth. Yeah. Oh, so he and was, I was he, like, so, what? So, so he's a d- uh, Yes. And then he said something like, I'm just trying to figure out which company I want to buy. I was like, this is a first day? Listen, this dude was smoother. Yes. Uh, that, that's yes. what he, front runner. Well, we seen this guy. Are we supposed to eat lamb or ham? On, 
on uh, Easter. Ooh, is I don't it know. one of those? I don't know. Oh, we know nothing. We know nothing. John Snow? Yeah. Right. We know nothing. All right. Yeah, that day didn't last long. They were not there long. <laughs> I understood it. Well, yeah. we got we got free agency coming up. Yeah. Now, I will say as far as or the draft is coming up, free agency has been going on, and the team did sign Olamide Zacchaeus. Way to kill that, son. Ooh, you are a professional. Yes, yeah. and Jeremy McNichols. So Jeremy McNichols is a guy who yeah. has been around for a long time. Seven years. Yeah, mm-hmm. running back depth, special yep, teams yep. guy. Yeah. And Zacchaeus is is familiar with the NFC East, played for the Eagles last year, yep. and also knows Dan Quinn. Yeah, most definitely. I've been say all of these guys that they brought in, somebody on the coaching staff coached them before. Somebody yep. had to sign off on each and every one of them guys, and that's what I love. They're getting the meat of the bread of the team right now. Mm-hmm. And these guys are brought in here for competition. They're letting you know where the floor is. Mm-hmm. Right? And this is a high floor. They're showing you. You're not making this roster just because we brought you in here. Yep. All right, this is a high floor, high ceiling roster right now, bringing these depth guys in here. And they're actually bringing these guys in here, hopefully they can beat some of these guys out. And that's hefty competition. No that's doubt. what you want right now. So I, I'm liking everything they're doing right now. And they had to rebuild this roster. This roster only had 23 players on it when yep. they got it. So they had. I, I knew we was going to get a truckload of guys in. But what I'm really seeing is they're not going trying to bat five for five, get the highest guys. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get the, the, the middle of the, uh, of I the love roster that. together. I, I totally agree with you. And there's guys that they may not be the big names, yeah. but these middle pieces are – Quality. Yes, crucial. Yeah. Quality. And it Most helps definitely. when the head coach is familiar with some of these guys. Yeah, too. and, and it, the assistant coaches and the rest of the coaches. That's exactly yep. right. Yep. So on the NFL on CBS, they, they came up with this idea of the perfect draft game. And they were yeah. saying, okay, if everything falls perfect, Perfect for the Commanders. Yeah, they get Jaden Daniels at two. Oh, okay. they get Tyler Guyton at thirty six. All right, they all get right. Tyler Ooh. Newbin out of Minnesota at Safe. forty. Oh, yeah. I love him. Yeah, sixty seven. They get DJ James and at pick seventy eight. Kate Stover out of Ohio State. Do you yeah. like these guys? Would this be your perfect draft, or are there some guys you would maybe substitute? I know it's hard to project that far down the line. Yeah. All right, at number two, I don't think you can lose with any of these guys. Mm-hmm. All right, the top three quarterbacks are the top three quarterbacks you win right there. If we get Tyler Guyton at 36, mm. the Lord has blessed us. I know <laughs> Good Friday was last Friday, but, boy, the Lord has – I think he could be the best tackle out of this draft. Really? That's how that's how highly I think of him. Uh, he's the best athlete when it comes to any of the offensive tackles. He's also used an uh, ex-running back in high school. He's faster, he's stronger than you think he is, and he's raw enough to not have bad habits. I really enjoy him. Now, Tyler Newman, Newman uh, the safety from Minnesota, yeah. at 40. That's a little high for me. Mm-hmm. That's a little high for me. I would love to have Lazay Leggett, a uh, wide receiver out of South Carolina right there. I would love to add uh, maybe a tight end right there. Okay. I would. Love, I think everybody falling in love with Theo Johnson from Penn State right now, which he's a guy that you could probably take at 78 where they got Kate Stover. Okay. All right. So it, it, it's some guys in there, but you got to also ask yourself, a guy like Darius Robinson – Rush in from uh, uh, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Would you want to take him at forty? Yeah, that's, that's, that'll be my dream pick at forty. I love the DJ James pick. I think he can really be a good player in this league. And I would actually not like K. Stover because he, he's a better blocker than he is a he catcher is. Yeah, of the ball. Yeah. And I would rather have a Theo Johnson, just a freakish athlete from Penn State. Okay, man, that's some good draft analysis right there. <laughs> Tell you what, that's all you need. Just sit next to Fred, ask a question, boom, let it go. Let's pay some bills, and then we're going to bring in Brentley Weissman. We're going to play Game of Thrones. Yes. We're going to talk more about the NFL draft. I know you're excited about I that. Am. We got to start with Honda. Someone said, you read these Honda ads like they're sensual. Yes, you do. And you know what? I'm you, going to keep doing you, it. You're a passionate brother. <laughs> <laughs> You have to explore the sophisticated, sleek look of the CRV hybrid and Accord hybrid, Honda's most powerful electrifying vehicles, yet conquer the unpaved road in one of Honda's rugged SUVs and trucks like the Pilot Trail Sport, Honda's most capable SUV ever, or experience the thrilling performance of the fun-to-drive Honda Civic with an available turbocharged engine. Get power performance and ruggedness with Honda. Find the Honda perfect for you at your local Washington-area Honda dealer today. 
and mm -hmm. Recycle Track Systems, transforming the way commercial businesses and communities manage waste and recycling. They combine the power of AI with premium customer service to optimize waste pickup schedules, ensuring timely and efficient collections to keep our neighborhoods cleaner and greener. There it is. <laughs> Visit RTS.com to learn more about how they can help your business manage waste more responsibly. As promised, the man himself, Brantley Wiseman. Every now and then, here on the show, we yeah. have great guests. Mm -hmm. We had Gary Clark pop in. Yeah, we, we had some great guests. Sean Springs? Sean came yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to keep it going now and bring in Brentley Weissman. Follow him on Twitter at Brentley12. He's a former NFL draft scout, yep. draft analyst, and he had this really great thread not too long ago where he compared NFL quarterbacks, draft quarterbacks, yeah. to characters from Game of Thrones, and you, more than anyone yes. I know, is a huge I, Game of Thrones guy. I, I thoroughly enjoyed, enjoyed it. I was mad at you, though, because I wanted you to do all linemen. I want the hound to come in there. I want you to do some defensive linemen. I want you to, <laughs> like, once I seen him do that, it started, my, it started my wheels to turn. I was like, well, yeah, I can compare some of these guys also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to throw out. A few of these, and yeah. then Fred, I'm gonna let you guys talk this out. Right? <laughs> All I'm right, gonna sit back. I'm gonna enjoy like everyone I else. I cannot wait. Let, let's go to Westeros on them right quick. I'm probably gonna get yeah, some of these names it. wrong. <laughs> Caleb Williams, <laughs> Oberyn Martell. I was shocked that you pick Oberyn with. Caleb, because when I see Caleb, all I can think of is the prince who was promised. All I can think <laughs> of is Jon Snow. You know, it's been so much said about Caleb Williams. It, 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 and I'm talking about two, three, four years. He just hung around this. So I was like, you know what? To me, Caleb is either the star of this show, he's he's the prince who was promised, or he's Robert Baratheon, meaning he has been up there so long that he's got the fat rat disease <laughs> that he doesn't rule like he used to rule. What do you think about those two comparisons? I do like the Jon Snow comparison, just, just for the prince that was promised. I think that is a great, um, obviously, saying that could be attached to Caleb Williams. The thing with Jon Snow is, though, like, he is much more of the stoic, much more of the play within structure, certainly not a risk taker by any means. He's he's not that guy where Caleb Williams, you know, his main kind of, you know, you want to call it a down, you know, negative trait or, you know, we're scouting him, I mean, some of his concerns is he plays too much out of structure. Mm -hmm. He invites chaos. Doesn't like to take the small wins. Loves to go for the kind of hero shot, the kill ball. And that leads me to Ober and Martell. I mean, look, he is one of, if not the greatest fighter in Westeros history. Yeah. Um, a master in, in a, bunch of, a, a bunch of different kind of poisons and things like that. Very similar to Caleb Williams where Caleb can, you know, throw from different arm, uh, arm angles. He can throw off platform. Oberyn can kill off platform you can kill from a different a lot of different angles and to me the issues that both of them have are they're very much over uh not aggressive yep. but they, they they try to do too much right yeah. they can't just take the easy win live to fight the next down we saw it with caleb williams this year at usc refused to take the check down refused to throw the ball uh the ball away that would cause interceptions that would cause turnovers over in Martell, refused to just take the easy win against the mountain, got too cocky, yeah. started talking, and gave up the win. So I like the Jon Snow comparison, but I got to stick with my Over and Martell one. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. He kind of he kind of sliced and diced yeah. me right there. But the prince was <laughs> promised. I thought it just so perfect right there. Do both of these guys paint their yeah. nails? I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Oberyn Martell is the guy uh -huh. to do that. Like, yeah. like he said. I started yeah. to say. No, no. He is the guy to do that. And he's flashy. He's right about that. He's flashy. He's going to be edgy when he do stuff. Mm -hmm. And also, he had the mountain right where he wanted yeah. him. And he just had to just, just splurge a little bit too long. Cost him his life. Let's yep. go with another one here. Yep. Drake May, Rob Stark. Now, when you said Drake May is Rob Stark, I tried to think. I, I, I looked around. And I said, you know what? It's a little Jamie Lannister in there. The, 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 the best sword in Westeros over there. But then when you, when you said Rob Stark, I said, yeah, the young wolf. And I looked at the quarterbacks, and he is the youngest out the bunch, one of the best leader, can be overzealous at some time. So I actually agree. It was one of the few. I agree with you with Rob Stark. <laughs> Tell me why you chose Rob at this one. 
with yeah, Drake May. Yeah, so you know, um, Rob Stark and Drake May, I think, makes a lot of sense. As you mentioned, uh, you know, Rob Stark's nickname in the show is the Young Wolf, and Drake May is the youngest of these quarterback prospects. And really, both had a lot of success early on in their careers. Uh, think about Drake May; he first popped onto the scene as a true freshman. I mean, he was phenomenal. Yep. And then he followed up the freshman year with a great, great sophomore year. And look at Rob Stark. I mean, he won his first the four three battles. Ba- yeah, three in, battles. Yeah, ba- three battles mm-hmm. in, the, in the battles of the Five Kings. Yep. Uh, one obviously at the Whispering Wood, where he was able to kind of t- capture Jamie Lannister. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I see a lot of similarities with their early success, but with that early success led to kind of their later struggles, right? Where Drake May, I think he had such early success, he was really overconfident in his ability to make some throws. I think Drake May's issue is he has a rocket arm. He's very accurate down the field. He knows where to go with the football. But there are times where he takes these risks. He makes these decisions that are just, well, why'd you make that throw? You know, you're throwing in a double coverage. I know you can get it there, but there's higher percentage throws available. You didn't have to take that risk. Same with Rob Stark. I mean, he did not have to cross the, you know, cross the bridge to the, to the twins to try to go, go through Walder Frey after he already betrayed him. Like mm-hmm. he didn't have to execute his, his bannerman, Lord Car Stark. There was there's unnecessary risks that both of them take later in their career that I think stem from their early success. And so I think that makes a lot of sense. They both have high upside. I love me some Rob Stark. Yeah. He was my favorite character before his untimely end, but um I think this one makes a lot of sense. I see a lot of uh, Daenerys' first husband, Drogo, in him, too, because he started off, like you said, started off so fast, but then flamed <laughs> out before he even could get started. I hope these cameras aren't cutting Yeah, I like me. that. I like that. Because I'm going to be like, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, I might get this name wrong. Yeah. Jane Daniels and Arya Stark. Arya Stark. You, you, you hit it right on the you head right there. Now, this is one that I really, really got to get you on right here because why did you choose <laughs> Arya for, for Jane Daniels? Yeah, you know, I, for me, it's the career growth, right? You think about where Arya started. She was, I think, you know, the 30 youngest of the Stark children, mm-hmm. um, the youngest little girl of the Stark children. And she really kind of went after Ned was um, executed. She had to go in hiding with with the up to the wall with mm-hmm. um God I'm blanking on his name. With the hound. Um but you know up up to up to the wall right with mm-hmm. um with the hound and uh the guy from the, the the gosh the night's watch and her journey I mean she's in rags to riches right she is literally sleeping on the road on the king's road mm-hmm. is at the lowest point and you know you just see her evolution from okay yeah she's on the king's round as a traveler, and then she goes to Bravos and learns the ways of the many-faced men, um, and then she comes back to Westeros and kind of seeks revenge for the Starks, and you just kind of see her grow step by step, season by season, which ultimately leads her to kind of be the hero of the show um, in the long night, where she kind of is able to make the finishing kill against the Night King and. Sorry for spoilers for those you haven't watched Game of Thrones, but at that point you probably should have by now, so I don't feel too bad. Um, <laughs> I think Jaden Daniels, right? Jaden Daniels. I mean, think I'm a Pac-12 guy. You see the Oregon stuff. Mm-hmm. I've watched Jaden Daniels from since his true freshman year at Arizona State. I think this is back in 2018, 2019. So I mean, he played Herbert. I mean, so yeah. he's been around the block. You see him uh, steadily improve year after year after year after year which obviously culminates to this past year, which led, led him to win the Heisman Trophy, led him to go from a mid-round quarterback who has some athleticism, has some upside, to now a surefire top five prospect, a guy who is arguably the second best quarterback in this class. I think there's a lot of similarities in the growth yeah. of the two, you know, of Arya and Jaden Daniels. And then it's fun, obviously. I can kind of do the dual threat thing. Arya, obviously, yeah. really good with the sword, but also has a dual threat with the ability to change faces. and Water do that dance kind of thing. and all kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Jaden Daniels, obviously, with his legs and his arm. And then lastly, the slender frames, I think, is an easy kind of throw in. Jaden Daniels, scrawny, uh, very slight. Uh, Arya, obviously, very slight, very scrawny. 
mm-hmm. both have to you know t- take better care in terms of not taking big hits, not taking shots to make sure they last in their yeah. careers. And so uh, I really like this one. I like, I'm surprised you didn't like it. No, I did like it. I like to throw a curveball in there. Uh, speaking of the many faced men, uh, Jack and her guard. All right, that's who, that's who yeah. I, when I looked at it, I was like, you know what? Cause he got many faces. Jane Daniel, like you said, he started <laughs> off kind of slow in Arizona State, and then he bust on the scene at LSU, and he became the Kingslayer. So at the end of the day, yep. I, when I say Jack and her job, I'm saying, which face am I getting from Jane Daniels? Like, is he is he a little bit of RG three? Uh, is he more CJ Scrod? Uh, it's like. When you see him, who it, like sometimes he confuses me, and that's why I chose Jack and her job because I like that's a dude that got many faces and he can be who he needs to be. You brought that up, he can be who he needs to be in a game. If he needs to rush for 100 yards, he'll rush for 100 yards. If he needs to throw for 400, he can throw for 400. So I thought you would go with him because he can adjust to any situation. I like that. I, I really like that angle, love that angle actually. Okay, here's another one. You ready? Michael yeah. Penix, Sir Barristan Selby. So you're saying that one of the best swords, one of the most everlasting swords, did you choose this because Michael Penix is old? Did you did you choose this because yes. Michael Penix has been in the league just a little bit? Because I got one name that I'm going to throw at you that I think going to be a curveball, but tell me why you chose uh, uh, Sebastian Selby. So let me just say, yes, I use Penix's age and his injury history to kind of get to the Barrison Selmy. And, and for those who don't know, Barrison Selmy, he's like a 65-year-old man, super gray, gray yeah. beard. But when you talk about maybe the best swordsman we saw on the TV show, yep. it's might be Barrison Selmy. Barrison yep. Selmy is a lifetime King's Guard, which is the kind of the protectors of the king. All those guys are the best swordsmen in the West Coast, and he was the Lord Commander of that group. So mm-hmm. we're talking high end swordsmen in Game of Thrones. Michael Penix, if you get past the age, if you get past some of the durability concerns, the injury history, in my opinion, he might have the best arm talent, the best pure passer in this class. Mm. He can put the ball anywhere he wants it, throws the most beautiful catchable deep ball i've probably ever seen at the college level um he throws his touch timing and actually he has a strong arm i think he at this point in time is maybe the most underrated play quarterback in this class and i think there's some selling because age because of kind of him not being a lord or not being um mm-hmm. you know a uh you know person in a great yeah. house yeah gets overlooked but if you stick to the tape you stick to the tape and you don't think about the, in, the age and the injury history, Barrison Selmy, he's up there for one of the best kind of overall characters in the show. And so that's kind of how I got to that comparison. Well, I have to throw this one at you. When I see Michael Penix, I see the great pocket manipulator. I see a Ooh, guy like that it. manipulates the pocket better than anybody in the draft. He knows how to, how should I say, very Tom Brady-ish, do what mm-hmm. I need to to get to a spot. So I told I chose Littlefinger, Peter Baelish, because Ooh. Peter Baelish manipulated. He's the reason we got the Game of Thrones. He manipulated everything from uh, the first person dying almost to the last person dying. I yeah. thought Peter Baelish was the great innovator in the show. I thought he kept everything going. I thought he made us ask the question, who is make, who is pushing all these buttons? And at the whole time, it was Littlefinger, making him the most important person besides Daenerys Targaryen in this show. So you said it like I said. I think sometimes Michael Penis could be the best quarterback in this thing and the one that gets no love. And I think that was Peter Baelish looking for a house, looking for a home. And I feel like that's Michael Penix to the T. Love that. I mean, think about, too, I mean, Michael Penix, a lot of his game is pre-snap. Identifying yeah. the right def- a defense, identifying the, the the free blitzer, getting the the offensive line the right protection, you know, the hot routes. I mean, that is Peter Baelish to a T, little finger to a T. He's always four steps ahead. Ahead of everybody. Of everybody, right? He's scheming, he's planning. And so I really like that when you begin to think about the mental aspect, the little subtleties that Penix has to his game. I mean, I, I you're right. I mean, his... Ability to maneuver 
his ability to just quickly, subtly slide, step in the pocket. Nothing crazy, but just enough to buy time and get to his spot and let his receiver uncover. And his ability to kind of do that consistently to me is very Peter Baelish esque. So yes. I love that one. Yeah. Let's keep it going. We got a couple more quarterbacks here. Bo Nix, Ned Stark. I had to laugh. When he said this, because okay. we did, we dealing with another old man, and I know he's an organ <laughs> guy. I can see it all in the back right there. We dealing with another old man. So the the thing about Bo Nix, you have to ask yourself: Is he dead good? Are he is he is, did he get better each and every year that made him get to this point? Mm -hmm. Or was he just an old man on campus? Was he just a guy that graduated three years ago that still has the same condo that throws the parties? Right. Or was he the guy that we think he is? So when he said Ned Stark. Everything starts and ends with Ned Stark. He is the king that refused to, to bow down and do things mm -hmm. the regular way. He was always truthful. And Bo Nix is true to the quarterback position. His dad played the quarterback position. Yeah. Now he plays the quarterback position. The question is, how long would the Bo Nix story last? Because we know how long Ned Stark was a part <laughs> of Game of Thrones. Yeah, well, you know, as a working guy, I'm hoping it lasts a little longer than, than Ned Stark. I'm, I'm rooting for uh, Bo Nix, but um, I like this one because Ned, to me, is maybe one of the best kind of leaders, the best uh, captains in Game of Thrones, and I think Bo Nix really is a quarterback that can really cultivate and, and you can build around from a leadership and from a kind of just captain of the organization, face of a franchise kind of guy. I think that is Bo Nix ton of experience as you mentioned he is a sixth year starter um same age as Penix by the way and same age as J.J. Daniels or Jaden Daniels and so both um all three of them are older uh quarterbacks and so I think the reason why I really like the Bo Nix and the Ned Star comparison is because they are both a little risk averse where mm -hmm. I think some of the other quarterbacks are more willing to kind of take that shot I mean Jake as I mentioned I mean he's not a there's not a throw on the field that will scare him away. You yeah. know, I, I do think Bo Nix at times is very reluctant to pull the trigger. And he's very kind of comfortable playing within structure, kind of taking what the defense gives him, lives to fight another down. And I think that's where Ned Stark really did himself in is because he was afraid to take the risk mm -hmm. and actually, you know, challenge Joffrey, challenge Cersei. He should have immediately read the book when he found out that you know joffrey and the kids are not yeah, you know they were not uh, Robert's, yeah. Uh, yeah. kids he should have rode to stannis immediately i'm out go to stannis and team up but ned too honorable you know doesn't want to do you know the the risk of the risk the risky move falls into cersei's trap and ultimately that's the end of it and so i think bo nix at times is afraid to take those chances afraid to kind of uncork it take yeah. that risk um, and that kind of also leads to some of his downfalls as he's playing so uh, just he's always consistent, consistently living in third down because of that. And so yeah. I think if both players, both characters can be a little more risk uh, risk taking, I think that would le uh, go a long way. Uh, and it's about how Bo Nick started. Uh, and that's why I got to throw this one in. He's a little various, the spider. You know what I'm saying? A little mm. spider in there because, you know, he started off hard at Auburn, went through a lot of stuff, but he learned to manipulate the game and play the game when he got to Oregon. So I got to throw Varys in there and say, you know what? It might be a little Varys in there too with him. Yeah, I, li I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, yeah, Varys had a really rough, obviously, upbringing. Uh, he was, I think, born in, gosh, I think it was not Bravos, but somewhere in Essos. And, you know, a lot of bad things happened to him. And similar to Bo Nix, a lot of bad things happened <laughs> to him at Auburn. He, he, did yeah. not, he did not have an easy uh, path at Auburn. The offensive line was terrible. The coaching staff was terrible consistently. Um, and he was able to kind of rise up out of that uh, dysfunction. And same with Varys. So I like that one a lot, too. Final one, J.J. McCarthy and Gendry Baratheon? Yep, you got or it. Or is it Gendry? No, it's Gendry. Is it Gendry? You, you, know, you right. hit it right you on the head. Got, it's Robert's it. bastard son. All right. oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yep. uh, and and why, uh, Gendry, the tool maker, tough, <laughs> The, uh, lived in uh, <laughs> no, lived in flea bottom his whole life. You got to realize. So you saying JJ is tough, been through a lot, understands he's a champion. That's why I kind of chose. I chose two other people to kind of compare him to. One I chose 
the hound because I feel like Ooh. JJ face has been pushed to the fire. Like it has been pushed to the fire. He wasn't asked to do as much as everybody else. He just did whatever he was asked very well. And he did it to the peak performance. He didn't, he wasn't asked to throw 40 times. He was asked to throw 19 times and he completed 17 passes. Like they're similar to the hound. I also got to throw Daenerys Targaryen in there mm. because he like, like, the way that he's rising up these boards, you can only do that if you ride a dragon. Like you can only do that if you ride a <laughs> dragon, my friend. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I, I love both of those, especially love the Daenerys one. Um, especially, I mean, you think about the the quick in season one. I mean, she went from you know being sold off the Khal Drogo to the end of the season, you know, having three dragons. So kind of a similar rise, right? As Jason yeah. Harvey's uh, have over the past couple months, but. I'm going to stick with my Gendry Baratheon uh, comp for a couple of reasons. One, I think Gendry, you know, is a bastard, but he does have royal blood. He's yep. the bastard son of King Baratheon. So yep. JJ McCarthy, former five-star, you know, one of the best high school quarterbacks coming out of his class. So five-star pedigree, right? And yep. then they both really weren't asked to do a lot throughout JD's career and throughout Gendry, you know, throughout the show. Yep. But when they were called upon, they always oftentimes delivered. JJ McCarthy in those moments where he was asked to make that gotta have it third and long throw or make the gotta gotta have it, you know, throw in the red zone, he consistently delivered. And same with Gendry. When Gendry was called upon to, you know, run back uh, beyond the wall to go. Uh, can save, we both you know, agree the group, right? that, that he ran back from uh, beyond the wall? <laughs> he ran back to, uh, that was too quick of a run. Like, Gendry probably hey. should be compared to Marvin Harrison Jr. If that was the case. <laughs> and at that point, he should be compared to, like, Xavier Worthy. I mean, he's got speed, you're right. <laughs> but, but Gendry, you know, time and time again, he stepped up when his name was called upon. Um, again, I think I, I think I said, you know, the, the the his best ball might be ahead of him from McCarthy, right? I think yeah. if McCarthy gets into a system that is much more quarterback friendly, much more, hey, we're going to air this thing out, um, you know, have some unique kind of play designs and be able to kind of get some receivers open more consistently. Um, I think that's going to go a long way to, in his development. And similar to Gendry, I think if Game of Thrones had, say, an extra season, Mm -hmm. I mean, shoot, Gendry Baratheon's Lord of Storm's uh, End. I mean, yeah, you know, he's going to be a yep. yeah, he's going to be a high Lord moving forward, and so I think his best ball is ahead of him. And so I think taking JJ McCarthy right now as presently kind of presented um, is a risk. I, I, I think it's a risk. I, I I think that you can bet on his tools. You can bet on the limited sample size that he's kind of shown on tape in those high leverage situations but at the end of the day he's not a for sure thing you know there, we have to ask ourselves hey like if harbaugh really had a quarterback worthy of a top three pick why didn't he throw a little more I, and i get mm -hmm. i get mm -hmm. he's a run first coach yeah run the ball play defense but still i mean we're talking a top three quarterback and you're not airing it out i mean it's it's a it's a little you know cause for concern and same with gendry it's like at the end of the day, he is a bastard born in flea bottom. You never quite know how he's going to be in that top dog spot. It's a risk, a risk that could very well pay high dividends. And so I love the Gendry and J.J. McCarthy pick, um, two prospects that are uh, high risk but very high reward. I see a little uh, 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 from the veil. What was the young name? A young Aaron from the veil. Oh, Robert Aaron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah, Aaron in there. <laughs> but so to Brentley Weissman, who's a former NFL draft scout and draft analyst, he also definitely knows his Game of Thrones like Fred does. But since we got you here, we have the draft coming up. We got to ask you some draft questions yeah. as well. So I'll start with the most obvious one. If you're the Commanders at number two, and certainly they are in the market for a quarterback, who's your guy? Yeah, and I have no idea kind of like what I'm going to get get into here with you guys. I don't know if you're a Jaden Daniels, if you're a Drake May, so I might, I might get in trouble here, but uh, I am a Drake May. I am mm. a Drake May over Jaden Daniels at two. Um, I think Drake May, his upside to me is as high as any quarterback in this class, and I think he is unfairly getting criticized 
for the lack of supporting cast that he was, you know, given this past year. I think if you go back to his sophomore tape, he was outstanding. And that's that's obviously when he had uh, Josh Downs and a couple offensive linemen and a running back um, with him last year. And so a little more kind of NFL players around him. And he was really able to kind of showcase what he can do. Um, Drake May, he's a prototype. He has a rocket arm. He's accurate across all levels of the field. Really good velocity. And that's where I do question Dan Daniels. I don't know about his arm strength in terms of the actual driving of the football in the intermediates part of the field. I don't think he has that ability to just zip it in, right, in the in the, the middle of the field against uh, in bracket coverage. I don't know about that with Jaden Daniels. I think he's a great deep ball thrower, but that's more about trajectory and arch and touch, whereas Jake May can do that as well. But I think he just has a little more gas in his arm. Uh, also, I mean, Drake May, I think he has about 20 pounds over Jaden Daniels, which mm-hmm. leads me to believe he can hold up more against NFL uh, defensive linemen taking a beating to him. He's stronger and firmer in the pocket. Um, I just think Drake May, just, he has a lot to like. You know, he has a lot to like. Mm-hmm. And I think Drake May, you know, his development is just getting started with Jaden Daniels. He's been in college for, you know, six years and yeah. his – Progression is phenomenal. I love it. And this is not a slight towards Jaden Daniels. I just think that if Jaden Daniels was leaving after his third year, it wouldn't be a conversation. Yep. It would be Drake May by a mile. And so I would I am willing to take the risk on Drake May. Again, I just think his upside his upside's higher. Um and and yeah, and then again, this is no slight to Jaden Daniels. I think Jaden Daniels is the third best quarterback in the class. Yeah. But I I got Drake May kind of comfortably ahead of him. Everybody's talking about the quarterback class because the quarterbacks out of sports car. Everybody like to look at mm-hmm. sports cars, but <laughs> I like the SUVs because I got kids. All right? Could this be? Because nobody's talking about it. Could this be the best offensive tackle draft in the last twenty years? You're talking about guys like Joe Ock, J.C. Latham. My guy is guiding from uh, Oklahoma. I think he's a beast. Most people don't even understand he played running back in high school, one of the best <laughs> athletes at the offensive line. Could this be? Because I can see right now six offensive linemen going in the first 32 picks. Could this be the best offensive tackle draft in over the last 20 years? Yeah, I'm str- I know we had another good one. I'm trying to remember what year. Fuwanga, was, you I mean, got Fuwanga one- from uh, uh, Oregon State. Yeah, Oregon you, you State, also yeah. got, uh, uh, what's the name, the from Washington Penn State. Kid. Yes. You, so yeah. it's it's guys all over here. And these are plug-and-play guys. These ain't guys that need to sit on the bench for a year. These guys that are ready to play right now. And I, it shocks me because I know it's not the sexy pick. How nobody's talking about what really matters, mm-hmm. the trenches. This could be the best offensive tackle draft in a long time. It, it really could be, Fred. And, and you know, you, you mentioned all the guys, Joe Ott, uh, Troy Fountainu from Washington is probably my favorite in this bunch. Olu Fashano from Penn State, Talis Fuaga from Oregon State, your guy, Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma, and then those other guys who I'm not even talking about. BYU. BYU yeah. K- Kingsley Sue Matala, I think I got his name yep. right. Patrick mm-hmm. Paul yep. from uh, Houston. Houston. I mean, there is a laundry list of tackles. Jordan Morgan from Arizona, another guy I really like. I mean, there is about eight guys that if you heard their name go in the first round, you wouldn't be surprised. You, you, if anything, you call it a good pick. Um, it's and it's guys who can play left or right. JC Latham's predominantly a right tackle. Joe Alo mm-hmm. left tackle. Talise Fuaga plays right in in college at Oregon State, but I think he could do both. Troy Fountain is left tackle. He could play right. It's phenomenal class. All these guys are athletic. They're long. They can move. They can both pass block and run block. All of them, I think, are really really good players. And I know the Commanders are probably going to be in the market for a tackle. Not at two. I think they got to get the quarterback. But, you know, somewhere in the second round, I think they have two early second round picks. Yep. I would not be shocked. I mean, gosh, if Kingsley Sumatala falls yeah. to them in the second round, they can nab him and then also get their quarterback of the future at two. That's yep. a massive win. Yeah, and you you right, and let, let's let's talk outside of the first round because yeah, the sexy picks in the first round, but we know the NFL are made from second rounds and undrafted free agents. So let's be honest with this thing. Anybody that you say, you know what, he might not go in that first day, but this guy to me is a gem and a guaranteed baller. I start first. I think Malachi yeah. Crawley. 
I think Medikai Crowley is uh, the, the faster version of Debo Samuels. I think when he gets in the NFL, it's going to be hard for NFL corners to tackle him consistently. I think he got the speed to beat you vertically. I think he built like a he built like Shannon Sharp. Like he's 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 really built, and I just think he going. I think he's set up for a long, long career, especially with the right team. Love Malachi Corley. Um, the only issue I have with him is this is route running, but in mm -hmm. terms of like his ball in his hands, yes. I mean, he's not even that big, but he's breaking all these tackles. I mean, like no one tackles him at the first attempt. You see him just trucking guys. He can make you miss. I, the Debo comp is good. Um, I, I, he's, he's a really fun player. I like him a lot. Um, I think you have to be a little bit creative. You know, you, know, you guys know Curtis Samuel, obviously. You see yes, those yes. commanders. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you have a plan for uh, Malachi Corley, similar to how Curtis Samuel was utilized early in his career at Carolina, get him in the backfield a little bit. You know, just be creative in terms of getting ways to get the ball in his hands. I think he could be a really good weapon for an offense. Uh, but in terms of like a day two-ish player who, day three-ish player who I think is going to be uh, surprising people as, in, early in his career. I love Jaden Hicks from Washington State, the safety. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's a really good player, outstanding size. He's a versatile guy. You can line up single high, split safety. You can come down in the box, even cover in the slot. Uh, my question for him was just how fast is he? I'm going to say uh, how fast is it, he? Man, is the, yep. is the, is the, is the, is the speed is, track going to be too fast for him in the it, NFL? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And I think he tested well at his pro day, um, which answered some of those questions. But in terms of instincts, ball skills, his ability to kind of match up in man with his size and length, I think he can do a lot across the board. And in a weak safety class, I mean, there's not a lot of guys who could maybe no. be counted on as a day one starter. No. I think he's the guy who might be able to. So – I would say him as a guy kind of a mid, later rounds so I think can come in and have an impact. I like James Williams from Miami that they move into linebacker. Mm, yeah. I think that yeah. move right there might, might not only save his career in the league, might turn him into a special player. Absolutely. I mean, abs I mean you, we've seen it, you know, in today's game. I mean, you know, Jer Jeremiah Ola, um, gosh, like, uh, J.O.K. from Cleveland, I'm drinking, playing how yep. I pronounce it. And Diablo name. from the, the uh, Raiders also. Uh, the Raiders, he was yeah, a safety. Of, yep. yep. From Vautech, yep. So yep. you see you see the guys, you know, play safety in college and come back down into the box. And today's game is such a space game, you know, such a game that requires speed and athleticism at the second level. I think James Williams from Miami, I mean, that move to me, as you mentioned, is definitely going to help him. One, in terms of where he gets drafted, I think that automatically boosts him into – you know, minimum third round. Third day, yeah, I can and say. And then all, yeah, you know, third round, uh, fourth round. And it's also going to help him kind of stick in the NFL as well. Really, I want to ask the opposite of one of Fred's questions, which is, instead of a gym, who is the one guy outside of the quarterback position who you believe is a can't miss? Is it Marvin Harrison Jr.? Is it Brock yeah. Bowers? He could end up with the Chargers. I love Brock Bowers. No, I do too. Oh, I love who's Brock the Bowers. one guy who's not a QB that you think this guy's going to be a star? If... Someone said, hey, Brantley, like, if you claim this player and he's going to be a multi-pro bowler, 10-year mm -hmm. pro, and he's going to be just bet my career, bet everything I have on one player, it's actually a receiver, but it's not Harrison. It's a Roma Dunze. Roma Dunze. I told you. Uh, 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 hey, Jamar Chase is all I see when I watch it. Jam Jam I Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams. I mean, it's it's the way he wins – is more translatable to me than the way Harrison wins. I think Romo Dunze, he is a one, he, he, he's faster than Harrison, point blank. Yeah. He's faster than Harrison. I think he's more explosive than Harrison. I think they both excel playing the football. Um, I think they're really good in terms of when they're contested, having corners on him. He can, he's able to kind of position his body, always in great position to attack the football in the yep. air. Um, he's great after the catch. He's tough. He's athletic. He's smart. I just don't see a path for this guy to fail. I, yeah. I genuinely do not see a path for him not to be an immediate thousand yard receiver in the NFL. Um, now I, I have Harrison above him in terms of like the grade, but I feel more confident in Roma Dunze being a cannot miss prospect than Harrison. I think Roma Dunze to me is whoever drafts him is getting a day one. Maybe not Pro Bowl because the league is just so stacked with receiver. 
but a day one number one receiver like immediately. I think mm-hmm. Roma Dunze is that guy. We agree. We agree. He is John Snow yep. with his dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he really is. He, he is the Zor high of the, of, the, of, the, of the draft class. <laughs> He's Brentley Weissman, former NFL scout and draft analyst. Follow him on Twitter at Brentley12. Obviously, he knows his Game of Thrones as well, and we appreciate the time. Brentley, thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. This is a lot of fun. Now we got to pay some bills, and then it's back to free agency, my man. You know what? If I could, if I could do pay these bills Shakespeareanly, like you do. Oh no! No, no you read them like you in Hamlet or something <laughs> like this. So I'm going to try to match your Shakespearean oh, okay, okay, energy okay. right here. <laughs> The Get Loud Podcast is brought to you by Bet365, <laughs> the official sport and bet partner of your Washington Commanders. Bet on a range of NFL markets with Bet365 app. Craft your own personalized bet slip and parlay. Access thousands of games with live streaming. Place your bet before the match or during the game. It's up to you. <laughs> Download the Bet365 app today and join 80 million members worldwide. Age 21 plus only must be physically, physically located in Virginia. Gambling problem? Call or text 1 800 Gambler. Did you like that? I got lost in your words. Right, That's great. You. MWAA. We don't travel to escape life, we travel so life don't escape us. We dream of any place in the world. And in the blink of an eye, we're there. That's the wonder of flight. All you have to do is decide is where to. Dulles International Airport. Let your imaginations soar. Book your adventure today at flydullis.com slash nonstop. Oh, man, that's yeah. beautiful. You, 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 you made me step my game up. Oh. That's you, what you do, Jinx. You stepped on, you surpassed. <laughs> <laughs> like watching a one-man show on Broadway. <laughs> it happens. It's do your free agency debrief. So according yeah. to Pro Football Focus, yes. they graded the best free agent moves yep. in the NFC. And your Washington Commanders, yes. number one with an A. Giants were A minus, Falcons A minus, Vikings A minus, Buccaneers A minus. Then you get into the Bs, Lions, mm. Eagles, yep. Rams. But Commanders, yes. number one. And you know what? I agree. I across This isn't the first time we've yeah. heard whether it's the people who are biased like me, yeah. people in the building, people who know this organization, people outside of this organization. This is yeah. a universal belief that this team did the right thing. Thank Great. you, uh, Mr. Adam Peters. Uh, yes. Let's start there. Uh, that's the hire that sparked everything. That's the hire that bought us Dan Quinn. That's the hire that brought us the, the number one free agent class. Mm-hmm. That's the hire that changed everything. And I think now this this machine is starting to operate like a machine. And it shouldn't shock you when you put pe- the right people in place to do the right things. Things come together. And that's what's happening now. And and also, we didn't have any players on the roster. So I think we was going to score high in free agency anyway because we had slots to fill. Yes. And we wasn't going to fill them with the, old, the players that we, we lost with last. Last year, mm-hmm. we was going to fill it with new players in a new direction and a new team. And you know what I love, too, is that you said a team because in the past, we've seen this, right? Yeah. There's a big splash in free agency. Yeah. Hainsworth. And, right. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, that's, that's it. it. This will put some butts in the seats. Yeah. I'm ready to put some butts in the seats because the team, team is, is great. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. team allows you to be good over decades. Mm-hmm. A player allows you to be good as long as he's healthy. Uh, and I think that's what they're doing over here. Quality over quantity. You've been in locker rooms before that were I have. functional, dysfunctional. I have. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. when you talk about, we were, we were discussing this at the beginning of the pod, yeah. these middle pieces. Yeah. When you have a good locker room and guys yeah. that know their role, yeah. how much does that help towards building a great team? Because you can have a lot of big names, a lot of big contracts, yeah. and maybe you're missing that those middle pieces. I think about it. you got... Austin Eckler, uh, a chiseled vet that want to show people, I still got it. You got a Hall of Fame in Bobby Wagner that's want to, oh, he's going to set the tone in mm-hmm. the locker room. Hey, you be quiet. You be quiet. You ain't want nothing. You ain't want nothing. Let me lead by example. Yes. Then you got Frankie Louvu, a guy that say, you know what? I just got my first big payday. I'm going to show him that I'm worth even more. Then you got a guy like 
Jeremy Chin. Ah, I got disrespected in Carolina. I'm here to set the mm -hmm. record straight. It's always about what is the hidden motivation of these players. And these hidden motivations take us to different levels. And I love the players we got because they do come with a lot of hidden motivation. And I like that. I it, it's, from When I look at all of the signees and I mm -hmm. look at it, I can go down and check on everybody and everybody playing for a whole different reason. Who is the one player? This is a tough question to yeah, ask yeah. or a tough question to answer. Yeah. But who is the one player that you are most excited about seeing? Frankie Lou. Yes. That's you, exactly you, you, what you know why? Because it sounds like. If I told you, Jinx, I'm finna go to the store, I'm finna go to Nordstrom's and get me some Louvu, you'll be like, you know, that's kind of expensive. Sounds expensive. <laughs> like, and, and if you watch this guy play on film and you don't get excited, you ain't got a football post. This guy shows up with nasty attitudes, mm -hmm. with nasty intentions, no matter if it's an offensive lineman, tight end, quarterback, running back, he's trying to run through the middle of their jersey. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to play with that guy. Oh, man. He's mm. going to be an absolute just fireball coming off the yeah. edge or wherever they put him. And that's the thing about it. Right. He, he can play middle. He can play outside. He can play whatever you need him to do. And that's why I feel like he is one of those guys that can really, really make an imprint here in Washington. And I love that pairing with Bobby Wagner. It's like, oh, you got Bobby Wagner patrolling the middle? Yeah. Watch what we're going to do with this guy. Yeah, we're just going to let oh him loose. God. And guess what? People keep forgetting that we get, we still got Jamin Davis. Mark that's right. my that's word. Right. This would be Jamin Davis coming out party. Hello, people in the NFL. My my name is Jamin. Aren't you happy to see the Cowboys haven't done anything? <laughs> well, you know what? No, because they tell me that their roster was already set. I, I'm not. I'm not uh, happy about their inactiveness. Why? They got a corner coming back, Diggs. Mm -hmm. All right, so they don't need Stephon Gilmore. All right? yeah. Bland showed you what he can do. Yeah. All right? uh, they had people backing up uh, the guys on the offensive line, ready to step in. Don't forget, they still got the draft. All right? I'm pe teams that not active. Is Kansas City active? No, the roster is set. Yeah. So, no, that don't do, do anything to me. The contrarian would say, but Kansas City just won a Super Bowl. Yeah, but also, uh, they're also a team with a ready-made roster. Uh, yeah. uh, even though the Ravens brought in the Predator to run the ball, sure they didn't did. really do much because the roster was ready. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Got to ask those questions. Yeah. Got to pay some bills, and then we're going to play a game. It's going to be one of those games. I don't know. It's going to make me feel old. It's Gen Z versus Fred versus us. Yeah, I'm going to say, ain't I Gen Z with you? Yeah, I guess I so. Guess All right. right. Have I talked to you guys about Honda? I Let's think you have. Honda. You, have. you got to explore the sophisticated, sleek look of the CRV hybrid and Accord hybrid. Honda's most powerful electrifying vehicles yet conquer the unpaved road. One of Honda's rugged SUVs and trucks like the Pilot Trail Sport, Honda's most capable SUV ever, or experience the thrilling performance of the fun to drive Honda Civic with an available turbocharged engine if you mm. want it. Mm. Yep. Get power, performance, and ruggedness with Honda. Find the Honda perfect for you. See your local Washington area Honda dealer today. Mm -hmm. And come on. Seat Geek. Yes. I sponsor the pod. We love they Seat They believe Geek. in us. Oh, they believe in us. Yes. They at least believe in you. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I'll take that Jinx guy. <laughs> He's in the sidecar. We'll take it. They are the official ticketing partner of the Washington Commanders. The deal is finalized. They're the newest member of the Commanders family. Get used to the name. You'll be hearing it all season long, whether you're buying or selling tickets to Commanders games or really any other live event in the DMV. Seat Geek is the place to do it. The official ticketing partner of the Washington Commanders, so Commanders fans can fan. You know what? You got that uh, that Clark Kent Superman curl that's just sitting right here in your head. Oh. It just won't move. It's just magical. Right all there. I got to do now that, yeah, yeah. is hit the weight room and add 30 pounds. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you, <laughs> it's, it's sitting there like you like a movie star right now. It refused to uncurl. Put a soft filter on me. <laughs> make me look better. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, Caroline is here in studio. Caroline, what did they call you, Caroline? They call me Intern Caroline. Oh, uh, yeah. They yeah. don't call you Intern Yeah, we do. No, no we're, they, they, that's it. The queen of the Gen Z's? Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, better, right? Queen of the Gen Z's. All right. So we have pieces of paper here. We don't know what they say. And I'm going to read you a Gen Z phrase. And then I read and you And I'll, I'll know what, what it says. Again, yeah. I'll have the hint. Same yeah. thing for you. And then if we get stuck, we can ask Caroline. All right. The queen of the Gen Z's. All right. Go. Are you ready? Shoot. Okay, here we go. Oh, man. I knew this one. What is a stand? A stand? Yeah. <laughs> is it the stand that... Writ uh, Eminem that letter on the song stand. Okay, it, it it's that's where it comes from. But what is it? So that makes a stand a person that's a stalker. 
Pretty much, yeah. All right. I mean, that's close, close enough. It's like I'm a, I'm a hype. I'm a super fan. I'm a stan. Uh, that's a stan. I, I was just listening to that song yesterday on, on Easter. Let me get, oh, I love they have <laughs> examples here. Here's the example. Yeah. Demi Lovato is a true queen. We stan. All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Make All sure right. you read the examples. I'm shocked that I got that one right. <laughs> okay, that was good. That was good. All right. What is Riz? Riz. R-I-Z-Z. Oh. I knew this like three weeks ago, and I and already you, and forgot. You're like this. I give you this. You're full of Riz. I'm, oh, hold up. Hold up. I'm full of Riz. Smiles? Almost there, but not quite. Uh, enthusiasm. I, if you was, I, if you was. Look at Caroline us, laughing at me like no, an old man right now. If you were describing me to somebody. Crazy. You, the C word is there. Oh, what, what, what do I have a lot of? Charisma. There we go. Riz. Riz. Charisma. Right. Oh, charisma. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. I'm sold. You kids ever heard of BYOB? Yeah. That's something I talk yeah. about all the time. Bring all that whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rot. Like rot, rot? Like R O T? I don't even know the way they describe this. Doesn't make any sense. Are you rot. trying to say that I'm rotten? Mm. Do I stink? You don't stink. It well, if no. I rot, that means I'm probably like. Do I wear the pants pamper or something? What? Ooh. You're not incontinent. Is <laughs> <laughs> I'm rot, Caroline? What is rot? So rotting is a thing that's been popular on TikTok where. It's mostly for girls. I've never seen this for a guy. So uh. just put that out there. But pretty much rotting is when you just do nothing. It's like a night where you put your phone down. You just take off all your makeup. You're in sweatpants. You order takeout. Like you are rotting on the couch. Like the couch is where you You're basically live. the antisocial hibernation. Yes. R no, that's called staying at See, home. See, also can't even. Yeah. That, that, that made me feel like <laughs> True. The, the, soft, the soft spot in a peach. That's rot. All right. <laughs> This or one. the soft spot in the peach. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you. Either right. one. Either one. That's it. Yep. Yep. That's Y A P. Like a bunch of gibberish, like a bunch of nonsense. Yes. Like a, this is this is way to hit that one on the head. A bunch of talk. No, a bunch of talk. Right, that's come on. Just yap. Yeah. That's that's easy, man. Ah, right, you got one. Yeah. Oh, that was an easy one, though. Right, it was. <laughs> oh, I know this one. Ick. Someone has the ick. The ick? Yes. They icky? Uh, so if you ick, ugh. You get the ick. I mean, they stink? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be a reason why, but normally it, uh. The ick? Yeah. Girls get the ick a lot. I've, I've been told. They get the ick. What's it's the when ick? someone does something. That makes you instantly hate the idea of being with them romantically. Example. Oh, my God. Did you see Fred picking his nose? That's such an ick. This boogery is a, a, is a I human mean, booger, trait. Yes. But anything that you could be <laughs> doing something, you're with somebody, and all of a sudden you do something, and someone says it or sees it, and yeah. it's just like, oh, I just got the ick. Yeah, like yeah. you like pass gas in the wrong place. Yeah. Like but if you pass so gas human. in public, they'd be like, I just that, got the ick. Hey, I can't believe this guy if, did if that. If I do, I'd be like, oh, my fault. Gas release. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, that's human, Jinx. I'm so tired of people not being human. Like, I wouldn't hold, I wouldn't hold that as an ick. Against somebody. Like if we was yeah, out yeah. and one slipped, I'd be like, <laughs> that's it. You you wouldn't be like that, would you? You would hold it against I like you, but I don't care. And I see Caroline on. No. All right. All right. This one might gonna be easy. D Lulu. Oh God. Uh, uh, listen to the D Lou Lou. Okay. You hear that? Delusional? This man is a gem. All right. Like it, you're Delulu. Yeah, yes. That like you're delusional. delusional. Come yes, on. Yes. You don't know what you're talking about. So basically about. now people just don't finish words anymore. That's yeah. what it is. Delu. Well, just tell We're me I'm delusional. Just tell me I'm crazy. All right, I'm fine That's with like that. Cray Cray. Remember Cray Cray? Cray Cray? Cray Cray? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Delulu. We used to say not in the 90s and stuff like that. <laughs> like like we made the word up or something. All right. How many got, how many got two left here? All right. 
<laughs> okay. So, BFFR. BFFR. So, this best friend forever right now. Uh, best friend forever. Uh, but then there's an R. Best friend forever. That's not right. It's not. No. I just didn't want to lead you down a path, like figure out the R. BFFR. Mm. Is it Big Fat Friend, Richard? People don't say buffer, do they? It is BFFR, right? Okay. What, what is it? I give up. It's used when you want someone to stop lying or get in touch with reality. Example, person one, yeah, I have the best fashion sense. Person two, girl, BFFR. Be for freaking real. Be for real. I just can't. I'm going to be lost. You can't even. You're going to rot I'm going to rot in this new world. <laughs> Ick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, this is pronounced well, A T E. Like you ate something? Okay. A T E. Okay. Oh, I don't know this. Like, I right, put it like this. All right. If I'm on the football field mm -hmm. and I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating? I mean, all the something. I'm is just it, saying, like, like if, if if somebody on the basketball court and they going for thirty, mm -hmm. they just what? Eat check. Uh, they just eight. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's eight. Oh, I thought it was eight. Just eight. Just eight. Oh, it's just eight. That's it. That's it. Man. Oh, like I'm eating. I, oh, okay. I spelled it out. Oh, I was thinking like I don't know, like C T E yeah, or like or I thought it stood for something. No, this is the world we live in, Jay. You can't make this up. Sign language or something. Yeah, hey, I know it. I know sign language. Well, we're a little bit smarter, I think. Nah, we went back. We went back. We got yeah. dumb. We, well, we, we sent the generation back. Yep. Yeah. Look at Caroline. Yep, you did. You got real <laughs> dumb today. That's it for the Get Loud podcast presented by SeatGeek. Thanks for being with us. That's my man, Fred Smoot. I'm Jinx. 